Hello, and welcome to the Capital Compass podcast. We are the official podcast of the New York State Catholic Conference. I'm your host, Jillian. Today, I'll be talking with Kathleen Gallagher, Director for Pro-Life Activities, and Kristen Curran, Director of Government Relations here at the conference, about advocacy in the public square. Before we get to our interview, I'd like to update our listeners on something new we're bringing to the podcast. During the legislative session, we will begin our episodes with a brief update on what is happening in Albany. So, without further ado, here is our very first Legislative Minute. Welcome to the Legislative Minute. I'm here with Dennis Paust. Dennis, what can you tell us about what's been happening with the legislature? Welcome to the Legislative Minute. I'm here with Dennis Paust, Executive Director of the New York State Catholic Conference. On January 5th, the New York State Legislature began their 2022 legislative session. Dennis, can you give us a little outlook and what topics and bills we will be closely following this year? Yeah, hi, Jillian. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, It's always an exciting time of the year here in Albany. Uh, The first part of the legislative session traditionally is dominated by the New York State budget. And after that's passed uh, late March, early April, they get more into social issues. But of course, our top social issues are always related to the protection of human life, especially at the beginning of life and the end of life. Um, the, but there, right now, our focus is going to be on budget. As we record this today, it's just a couple of days away from when Governor Hochul will uh, release her executive budget, which by the time this airs, it will already have been put out. And, and in subsequent episodes, we'll examine it a little more. But the budget issues that we're focusing on this year as a conference— uh, first of all, education, and specifically, you know, our Catholic schools and, and fair funding for our Catholic schools. And we're asking the governor to include um, an expansion of, of the existing health, safety, and security grants that our schools are eligible for to address capital needs. I know a lot of Catholic school families uh, know well that, you know, maybe their school needs a new boiler, a new roof, new filtration system. Um, so that's an important uh, budget priority for us. And then, of course, the human services arena. And just quickly, you know, uh, expansion of programs for refugees and and, and immigrants. Uh, we're looking for an expansion of the child tax credit. There's always a need for more affordable housing now more than ever, and also rental assistance for New Yorkers, especially during the pandemic. And a badly needed cost of living adjustment for our human services workforce, including those who work in our great Catholic Charities programs. Uh, every year, uh, these uh, COLAs seem to be pushed off another year, and Uh, It's getting harder and harder to recruit and retain good workers, essential workers who have really stepped up during the pandemic. So that's the immediate focus going into uh, the next couple of months for us. Thank you so much, Dennis. And we'll be right back after a brief message. Are you interested in staying up to date with New York State legislation pertinent to the Catholic Church? Do you want your Catholic voice to be heard? Sign up for the Catholic Action Network by going to our website at nyscatholic.org slash action dash center or texting can to 50457. Again, can, C-A-N, to 50457. And we're back with Kathleen Gallagher, Director for Pro-Life Activities, and Kristen Curran, our new Director of Government Relations here at the conference. On January 5th, Kathy uh, officially announced her retirement, and Kristen recently joined us at the beginning of the year. So, Kathy, with you set to retire soon, um, after working for the conference for almost four decades, how do you feel? Well, um, I feel happy and excited and joyful because I know this is the right time in my life to step down and try something new. Um That said, I also feel a good sense of relief um, because it's difficult to shoulder the weight of protecting every human life on your shoulders for so long. And I already feel some of that relief coming, so that's a good feeling. And I also feel proud of the accomplishments that we've been able to make in a state like New York, which is clearly hostile to most pro-life activities. You've been here for almost four decades. How much has being a pro-life lobbyist for the church changed over the decades? Hmm. It's changed a lot. Um, It's changed a lot because of the composition of the legislature. It's changed a lot because of the new role of social media. 
um, you know, for so many reasons, it's changed dramatically. Like, there was a time early in my career where I could sit down with a lawmaker for 25 to 35 minutes and actually write a piece of legislation or draft a family-friendly policy. I even sat down with some of our adversaries, the people working against us, to come to some kind of solution, some kind of compromise, you know, to, to make it work. Those days are long gone. Now I'm lucky if I get 30 seconds in a hallway with a lawmaker. And I don't know, Kristen, you might agree with me or disagree with me with this, but I think there's so much political theater now, right? It's all Absolutely. about sound bites Absolutely. and how is this going to yeah. play on my Twitter feed, you know, as yeah, opposed to... no long term anymore. It's all that short term sound bite, like you said. Yeah. And so that makes it um, even more difficult in a state like New York that's hostile to pro-life issues. So it's it's definitely a steep uphill climb when it comes to all these beginning of life issues. But wh what has like kept your faith throughout all these obstacles? And uh, what do you suggest to others who might have become discouraged uh, with these challenges? Well, it's easy. It's easy to become discouraged. Um, I have banged my head against the wall so many times I have bruises to prove it. And you become frustrated and angry and disheartened. Um, I get it. But our faith is what has to keep us going. It has to keep us motivated because God tells us there will be rewards at the end, <laughs> you know, and all we can do is plant seeds and hope that we can, with those seeds, you know, they'll grow in God's time and we will be able to change minds and change hearts, you know. Um, so the legislature, the composition of the legislature changed radically in, in 2018 with the elections. And then in early 2019, we got the Reproductive Health Act that became law. So now abortion is a fundamental right in New York State at any point in pregnancy for virtually any reason. It's free. It's covered by Medicaid and all health insurance policies. We're all forced to fund it. Um, that is certainly discouraging. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, we have to try to convince women out there who are faced with unplanned pregnancies that they can carry their babies to term. They can bear their children. And we, the church, are going to be there to support them, you know? I mean, I really think we have to concretize our pro-life commitment and make it real so that, like, every parish secretary in every parish in the state knows where they can direct a young woman who comes into the parish saying, I'm pregnant. I need help. Do you know? Do we know where to send her? What are the alternatives out there for her? How can we assist her and her baby, and then empower them to raise their children um, or provide them with adoption resources? So I think again, sorry for rambling, but I think we have to. Um, if we can, if we can't change lawmakers' minds, at least on the abortion issue at this point in time, maybe we can plant seeds and we can change hearts and minds. So beginning of life issues, hot topic, um, especially among Catholics. But what about end of life issues, especially in New York? Well, I think there's certainly some hope and optimism at the legislative level, um, certainly on the issue of doctor assisted suicide, which is a hot issue in New York and in lots of other states. Um, the advocates for a policy of doctor assisted suicide are pushing very hard and New York is in their crosshairs. They've certainly made us a target. Um, but we have created a very diverse, broad coalition of groups against assisted suicide. We're joining with other faith groups, disability rights advocates, doctors, and medical associations to fight this. And I think there are enough qualms among both Democrats and Republicans about this kind of a policy to allow people to kill themselves um, that I think we might be able to stop it here. I am optimistic, cautiously optimistic on that and other end of life issues. You know, we have to get greater access to hospice care and palliative care in this state. New York State ranks 49th in the nation in terms of the use of hospice. What, what is that? That's abysmal. That's shameful. And I say to legislators all the time, don't you wonder why that is? Shouldn't we be removing obstacles to palliative and hospice care? There are clearly obstacles there if people aren't accessing it. So let's do that before we move to this radical policy of let people kill themselves. Right. Turning the tables a little, we're going to uh, talk to Kristen. Um, so you recently 
uh, were hired as the new director of government relations for the conference. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm from Albany. I grew up. Uh, I grew up here. Grew up going to Catholic school here. Um, I go to church here with my family, and I've been lobbying for just about nine years in New York State. So I've done a lot of different stuff. You know, a lot of different stuff with labor and all kinds of different technology groups, education. So I've kind of done all the issues, um, but I'm excited to be here uh, working on Catholic issues. Uh, now, how do you think being a lobbyist for the Catholic Church differs from representing other non-faith-based clients? Um, well, like I alluded to, you know, I get to um, now do the work that I'm so personally passionate about. I don't think a lot of people get to say that. Um, you know, they say, what, what do they say? Love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. So <laughs> um, I'm getting closer to that. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, as a lobbyist in my career, like I said, I represented all sorts of groups, um, you know, just getting to do this work that um that I really care about. And then, like, I think you talked about it, Kathy, like, just your moral values aligning with the work and getting to get a salary for, for yeah. working on that yeah. is, I, is just amazing. And I feel just truly blessed. My, uh, my husband was unemployed for a period of time during our marriage. And he used to always like be searching for the perfect job, you know, <laughs> where you would like wake up, hit the alarm clock and say, yay, and jump I out want of bed. to go to work today. <laughs> and I always used to say to him, you know, most people, I would say a majority of people never get that. Right. But I've had that in my right. career. How, what a blessing that is to exactly. be able to yeah. go to work and say, I believe in what I do and I'm going to get paid to do it and I can make a difference in the world. It really is right. a blessing. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's how I feel like, um, I feel blessed, like I said, and, uh, you know, just really thanking God basically that, that how fitting but that it uh that it, this all worked out because and I'm just thrilled to get started so so we deal with some broad and very difficult topics as I'm sure Kathy can um, talk about and she's indicated there's room to uh, persuade lawmakers especially with um, end of life issues are there any potential areas of uh, common ground with lawmakers who don't necessarily agree with us on abortion issues yeah, um, you know, I mean, especially with the end of life, Kathy alluded to this, um, you know, it's, that's an area that's, I think, you know, as far as lawmakers opinions on it, um, their opinions are largely driven, I think, by personal experience. Um, and it's not so partisan, it's not really um, determined quite by party lines. Um, so as she, you know, talked a lot about, I think there's a lot of room there to continue to educate um, lawmakers and try to explain all the different nuances, like she said, all the different groups, the disability groups, you know, all the different people and groups that it touches, um, you know, explain those nuances and those unintended consequences and everything that comes with it. Um, so definitely room there. And then, you know, just as far as the breadth of what the Catholic Church works on and using all of that work to find common ground and then, you know, open the dialogue for things like abortion. You know, Kathy talked about it. That ship has kind of sailed in New York and they've taken it as far as we think they could possibly take it. They seem to find ways to take it farther. But, you know, that just pushes us, and Kathy talked about this, to be creative and find other ways to protect life and find ways to, you know, let mothers know, like she talked about, that we're here for them. And, again, we just have to be creative in finding new ways to, you know, support beginning of life. And, again, I think there is that common ground to be found, um, the good work we do, you know, whether they love abortion or not, I mean, everyone wants to help, you know, an unwed mother, right? Or, you know, the poor and things like that. So, you know, the Catholic Church is all about lifting those people up. And I do think that still remains an area of common interest um, with lawmakers, even if they support abortion, again, to open those, you know, conversations and, and hopefully work, be able to work together for those creative ways for us to continue to support life. And are you comfortable doing that? Like having, like, like there are some of our pro-life people who are very passionate about the issue, but they wouldn't even think of sitting down with a lawmaker who has voted pro-abortion in his voting record. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm comfortable. You know, I think, again, we, we talk about being a voice for the voiceless. That's what we need to do. You know, this is my job. I've done it for 10 years. I'm comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. Good, um, with good. Good. That's you know, good. Because it's not always comfortable. <laughs> it's not comfortable to ask for money. It's not comfortable to ask for things that are unpopular. Yep. Um, you know, but I'm I'm good at this and I I think 
I, it is my calling almost, you know, as in this job and in a job that I love and am passionate about to, to do those uncomfortable things and be that voice for the people that aren't comfortable doing it. I know how to do it. So, you know, and even if, again, they don't agree with it, there's, there's people in the state of New York who, you know, are pro-life and they deserve to have their, their point of view um, represented. And we, and of course the unborn and all the other people that the Catholic church protects deserve to have us doing that work for them. That's great because you know who else was uncomfortable? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> there was you uncomfortable. Go. Exactly. But he sat down with the prostitutes and the tax collectors and all those people and he went countercultural. And that's what you sound exactly. like you're willing to do. Yes. So that's yes. great. You're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kathy. <laughs> So um, as many New Yorkers know, in 2018, the legislature changed dramatically. And Kathy also mentioned that. So with 2022 being an election year for statewide government officials and all the state legislatures, do you think that changes the dynamic at all? Absolutely. Yeah, that that always changes the dynamic. Um, You know, I can't believe it's another election year already. Um, I know. You know, we all remember that oh. kind of oh. <laughs> when it really was shaken up. And it's just it's always a big year. Um, but, you know, lawmakers are much more hesitant to take controversial votes in an election year. Um, they know they're under intense scrutiny from voters. I think today and what's unfortunately such a sharply divided electorate, you know, with all these societal stresses we're facing as a state, as a nation, um, that scrutiny is even more intense. So even though New York is deep blue, uh, depending on what area of the state they're from, especially electorates are going to be reluctant to move anything that tends to be like super controversial or divisive. And, you know, it remains to be seen, but I think end of life issues especially fall under that category for now, but definitely changing the dynamic and, um, you know, possibly in our favor, we don't know, but yeah. So we'll be looking out for that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So I have a final question, both for Kathy and Kristen. How can the average Catholic listening help the church and its mission to shape laws that respect human life and promote justice? Well, um, the first thing we would recommend, of course, is going to our website, nyscatholic.org, um, and joining our Catholic Action Network, um, which is simple and free. And we don't bombard people with email messages too much, um, but we do send alerts when issues of importance are on agendas and we need people to contact their lawmakers. So that would be one good thing. Um, I would urge people to actually start a dialogue with their elected officials. I mean, you'd be surprised when I used to go out to the parishes and educate people. Most people don't know who their state assembly representative and their state senator is. You know, they'll say, oh, Senator Schumer. No, that would be your national senator, (laughs) one of two. Um, Once they know who their state senator and state assembly representative are, it's important to get on their mailing lists and find out what they're doing. They're supposed to be representing your interests as constituents. So let them know what your interests are. Let them know that you dislike a policy of doctor-assisted suicide. Let them know what you favor in terms of alternatives to abortion. Um, so I would I would recommend joining the network, starting a dialogue with your lawmakers. What else would we recommend? Well, I think I you know I think you bring up such a good point about starting a di- dialogue with um, your lawmakers, your local people. You know, there's a saying, "All politics is local," and it truly does all start um, at this level. And you know, I think even on a personal level, when I felt kind of dismayed or um, really down about something that's going on, you know, with, through the government, I think your point is such a good one to just let your lawmakers know how you feel. You know, I think they they should at least know how people are feeling. It doesn't all have to be signs and, um, you know, protesting and shouting people down. Like, you can just, this, di- I think, notion of a dialogue is, is a really good one. And I think just the more people that know how people feel, the easier it is to have a conversation. So I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, and then, yeah, again, just on this theme of the the local level, just help out at your church. Again, the church is trying to do all this good work and support people through through its work. Um, so just help out kind of at that grassroots level if you can, if you have the time. Um, but definitely in staying, you know, again, Kathy said this too, but just stay informed, keep up to date on what's going on so that you can help in, in even these little ways. And they're not even little ways. They're, they're really important. So yeah. And we'd also recommend People civilize it. Yes, exactly. Always remember that Jesus calls us to generate light, not heat. <laughs> um, and keep it calm, keep it rational and reasonable, because as we all know, the temperatures are very high in political yes, discussions yes. today. We have to tone it down and set an example for others of how to have a dialogue on sensitive, controversial issues. 
people can have differences of opinion, <laughs> but it's important to dialogue. Thanks for listening to the Capital Compass podcast. And a special thank you to Kathy and Kristen for taking time out of their day and coming on the show. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be coming out with a new episode every other week. If you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And to catch the latest from the conference, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at NYS Catholic Comp and on Facebook at NYS Catholic Conference. Thanks again, and God bless.